Hey, I'm curious what your desktop setups are. I myself blend a lot between headphones and bookshelves. I generally have my headphones running through a shithill too, but my speaker configuration is always changing. As for speakers, I am currently running the new Emotiva B2 Plus, which I have a review coming soon. I swapped these around with a few other pairs, but that's not really the purpose of today's video. I wanted to look at some of the budget options for near field desktop listening. Some people may not mind having a giant amp on their desk, but I prefer a small package that doesn't take up too much space. This limits me, but barely. There's a wide selection of Class D amps right now, and a lot of them have pretty great performance. Let's take a look at the four competitors today. First, we have a couple of jack of all trade units, the Yima DO3. This is the most well-rounded unit uh, we'll test today. It has a DAC, Bluetooth, and lots of inputs. The other is a 1MII B08 Plus, more of a budget all-in-one. Next are a couple of dedicated amps, the Yima A07 and the SMSL SA50. No DACs or Bluetooth here, just amplification, but we do get a volume knob with both. For testing today, I'm going to pair these all with the SMSL SU8S DAC to give us a little bit of consistency. The DO3 can stand on its own without an external DAC, but we will cover the differences in performance once we get to that one. Let's quickly rate the exterior and build quality of these units first, before jumping into the sound and performance grades for each one of these. The IEMA DO3 up first. We are greeted with a simple black box, a power button, input selector, and a volume knob on the front. If you push in the volume knob, you will also access the tone controls. The screen on the front displays in blue. You see your input, volume, bitrate readout. The rear has USB, optical, coax, RCA, and a Bluetooth antenna for input. We also get a sub out and a couple small speaker connectors, as well as the power input. Next is the B08 Plus. First thing you notice in comparison is the case is plastic, rather than metal like the DO3. It's also much smaller. The front provides a toggle switch for optical, Bluetooth, and auxiliary. Next to that are the tone controls. No screen or extra fills with this one. The volume knob is also the power button. To turn it off, you turn it counterclockwise until you get a click. The rear has two antenna, a 3.5 millimeter, RCA, and an optical input. This one also includes a sub out, which is nice. Finally, two speaker outputs of similar quality to the DO3 as well. Now let's look at the dedicated amps. First, the SMSL SA50. It's a little chunk. It has a nice solid feel to it, all metal construction. The front has a push button for power with nice feedback and a volume knob, which is smooth and nothing really to note outside of that uh, blue ring that comes on around the knob when it's powered on. It's a nice touch that isn't too bright. The rear also has RCA audio inputs, speaker outputs, and a power cable input. Finally, the IEMA A07. It's a little longer than the SMSL, but has the same solid feel. All metal construction, nicely weighted case. This one has a toggle on the front for power. A red light within the switch comes on when it's powered up. The volume has a similar feel to SMSL, smooth and works like a volume knob should. The rear is nearly the same in that it has RCA inputs, speaker outs, and a power in, but this one also has an auxiliary 3.5 as well. Rating the exteriors, let's break these into two groups, the amps and the all-in-ones. All-in-ones I'm giving first to the IEMA DO3. Some people feel it's a bit dated looking, but I don't have an issue with it. It's compact enough, the case is solid, and it offers one thing none of the others do, which is a screen. That leaves us with the 1M II B08 Plus, which just feels much cheaper. And to be fair, it is. Um, but it's also really a lightweight construction, uh, plastic, it's nice and compact, but at the expense of features and inputs. Now to rate the Strictly amplifiers. First goes to the SML SA50, but just barely. The build and design are very similar, but I gave it to the SMSL just because it was implemented a little cleaner. The switch is a little nicer than the toggle, and it's just a little more polished looking. The IEMA A07 is right up there with the SA50. I had no issues with either of these dedicated amps. There just isn't a lot to note on these amps. Now let's cover the performance. The AIMA DO3 is up first. It utilizes the TI TAS 5624A chip. They boast 150 watts times two, but let's talk real world numbers without the extreme THD of like 6%. Digging deeper, we are likely to see a real world number of around 55 into two channels at eight ohms and 0.1 THD using the 32 volt power supply that's included. This isn't 300 watts, but it's surely not a slouch either. I had no trouble driving any of the speakers I paired it with. 
Around 50 watts is plenty in almost all cases, outside of some of the more demanding bookshelves. The internal DAC is 24-bit 192, and it's fine. I won't come out and say it's fantastic, but it's certainly not bad. I used it connected to my PC over USB for weeks. A very usable DAC at this price point if you don't want to go with an external. On that same point, if you want to elevate this unit to a higher level, I paired it with both a Shipmodius as well as a SMSL SU8S, and both really did sound great. We get Bluetooth, it uses the QCC3034 chip, and it supports ACC, SPC, AppDex, and AppDex HD. I didn't use Bluetooth often, it works fine, but in my case, I was either, either using it paired with my PC over USB or with a Wii Mini streamer going into it. The screen is simple to read and tells you just enough. We get your inputs, volume, bitrate, as well as the tone controls. The DO3 also offers a remote, the only one of the four today that has that feature. Overall, this one feels pretty complete. It offers the most input flexibility, sub out, remote, and a very usable internal DAC. Now onto the 1MII B08 Plus. Dual TPA3116 D2 chips are utilized. We're seeing around 30 watts into two on this one. You notice a drop in power compared to the DO3 offering, but the sound of control is, is still fine on a set of small bookshelf speakers. I actually found myself enjoying the sound a bit after tweaking some of the tone controls. When testing with the SMSL SU8, there's an audible amount of noise with nothing playing. It's actually a ticking sound as well as a static. Even with the volume knob at the lowest setting, I could still hear it. The sound only seems to be present when using the RCA in. I tested with Bluetooth and did not have the same issue. I was actually a bit disappointed here. The sound is decent and you get a lot of features jammed into this little box, but there's always gonna be some compromises at this price point. Onto the dedicated amps. First, the SA50. It uses the STM TDA7492 chip. We are realistically looking at around 30 watts into two channels of usable power at 1% THD. It's paired up with my SMSL DAC and the sound is pretty good. Clean stereo imaging, no issues with separation. The low end may be a little bit boosted, which is what it is. It's fine for most pairing. If anything, it adds a little more weight to the bottom end. One thing I have noticed with this is that if you have the volume very low, you get an obvious imbalance between the speakers. It only occurs at a very minimal volume and it's not really an issue. If you turn it up at all, it goes away, but it's still worth noting. The second dedicated amp we will look at is the AIMA A07. AIMA did a fantastic job incorporating the Texas Instruments TPA3255. 8 ohm performance is going to be around 50 into 2 and 75 into 2 at 4 ohms with the included power supply, which is a 32 volt 5 amp. AIMA provides a nice chart within their product description on other options of power supplies to bump up the power a bit, uh, which I think that's pretty neat as well. I haven't played around with any of the other power supplies here as the combination provided powers my speakers very well. To me, it feels like this amp has more control and power than any of the other offerings we're looking at today. The sound with this amp is very clear and precise. The highs are crisp and the lows are nice and full. The amp is silent, thankfully no hiss or audible distortion. I could classify this amp as uh, more of a detail amp than a warm one, um, but some of that can be paired with your other equipment choices. My only note on this one is that it also suffers from the channel imbalance at very low volumes. It's really common on amps like this and resolves itself with basically any volume gain from the lowest position. We gave the nod to the AIMA D03 and the SMSL SA50 on the exterior and build. But let's cover the performance, and this one is pretty easy. As for the all-in-ones, the AIMA D03 wins again. It's hands down a more capable unit than the budget 1MMI B08+. Power, sound, connections, and features all go to the D03 here. As for the Strictly amplifiers, it's also very clear to me. The AIMA A07 takes the win over the SMSL SA50. The A07 just gives you more. It's more powerful, has a fuller sound, and in general just feels more like a precision unit. There you have it. Looks like AIMA took it all today, but I could realistically make a case for any of these. I would pick the AIMA D03 if budget allows, but if I needed something really small at a fraction of the cost, I would find the 1MII acceptable, assuming I was using the Bluetooth to avoid the distortion my unit had with the RCA inputs. The AIMA A07 would also be my obvious first choice of dedicated amps, but if I was very space limited, I wouldn't have an issue with the SMSL SA50. 
It's a nice little amp. It just lacks behind the AO7 in power. And in my opinion, the sound characteristics that I really prefer. Well, that should do it for today. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later. See ya.